the mighty god Zeus had set his eyes on a beautiful young maiden of Phoenicia named Europa. He carried her off to the island of Crete, where she gave birth to three sons, Minos, Sarpedon, and Radamanthus. King Asterion of Crete then took Europa to be his wife and adopted three boys as his own. This gained Crete favor with the gods. As Asterion grew old, though, there was the question of who would succeed him as the king of Crete, since all three of his sons had equal standing as descendants of Zeus. Minos, eager to succeed his human father's throne, reached out and prayed to the god of the sea, Poseidon, to give him some kind of sign and allow him to be the king of the island of Crete. Poseidon responded by sending a beautiful white bull to Crete from the sea that Minos was to sacrifice in his honor in exchange for being the next king of Crete. The people of Crete saw the bull and saw that it was a gift to Minos from Poseidon and it made them agree that Minos should indeed be the next king of Crete. And so after Asterion passed, Minos became the king. But not willing to give up the impressive magical bull of Poseidon, Minos sacrificed an ordinary bull in its place. Meanwhile, in Athens, there was a brilliant architect named Daedalus, whose engineering prowess had greatly improved the houses and buildings of Athens and increased the quality of life for everyone. He even built the palace of King Aegis. Daedalus had a nephew named Perdix, who was a swift learner and wanted to be as good of a builder as his uncle. Perdix was very motivated, and his skill soon surpassed that of his uncle. But Daedalus was jealous of Perdix, and afraid that his own great reputation would soon be overshadowed by that of his nephew. So one day, when Perdix was working high on a scaffolding on a building being built on the edge of a cliff, Daedalus kicked the supports out from under him, sending Perdix to the jagged rocks below. Perdix would have died if it weren't for the intervention of the goddess Athena, who, at the last minute, transformed Perdix into a bird, though he would remain that way forever. Shortly after the townspeople heard what Daedalus had done, they were furious with him. But they couldn't bring themselves to kill him, because he'd spent his lifetime making so many improvements to their city so they agreed to banish him from Athens. Daedalus and his son Icarus boarded a ship and set sail for somewhere else. In Crete, Minos was king, but the god Poseidon was unhappy that Minos had cheapened his blessing and sacrificed an ordinary bull rather than the white bull he'd sent him. So Poseidon cast a spell on Minos' wife Pasiphae that would make her fall madly in love with the beast, the bull of Poseidon. But Pasiphae had no way to satisfy her unnatural lust for the bull. And when Daedalus arrived, she secretly enlisted his help, and he built her a wooden cow suit of sorts that would allow her to mate with the beast. Not long afterwards, Pasiphae bore a child by the magical bull, a half-human, half-bull creature. They named him Asterion. But soon after, Poseidon caused Asterion to go mad and begin tormenting the countryside of Crete. Poseidon had had his revenge. Daedalus was also enlisted to help solve the problem of the Minotaur, the name given to the mad half-bull, half-man Asterion. But they couldn't kill him for fear of upsetting Poseidon further. So Daedalus would construct an elaborate labyrinth, and when they lured the monster into it, it was never able to find its way out. So there is a short and sweet version of the origin of the Minotaur and the labyrinth. There are, of course, different versions of this story, as there are many Greek myths, but one in particular that I like in this one is that the bull of Poseidon eventually gets set off to Athens after the birth of Asterion, the Minotaur. And rather than Minos' favorite son Androgeus being killed by murderers at the behest of Aegeus' nephews, which I mentioned in my last podcast, he is killed by the white bull of Poseidon. So in that version, Minos' past mistakes just continuously haunt him. And in that same version, the bull is eventually killed by Theseus when he arrives in Athens, the bull being sent after him by the order of Medea, King Aegeus' manipulative sorceress. Either way, though, you end up with the story of Theseus entering the labyrinth as a tribute and killing the Minotaur once and for all. But that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. 
be sure to click subscribe and share lore and legends with your friends here on YouTube or in whatever app you like to hear podcasts. You can get more extra episodes like this one too if you become a supporting listener for a mere two bucks over at Red Circle, which I'll link to in the episode description. Thanks again.